welcome to the Human Broadcheck Podcast. Here we have inspiring stories worth spreading. I am your host, Karina Rosa Feikenberg. And I'm 25 years old. I love that. I always say the same thing. I'm just 25 years old. 25, yes. Wow, I'm sitting here and I do have really, it's a great honor to talk to you. Oh, you're so kind. Oh, no, Same it is. Here. And I get a bit excited now about my today's guest, who is Diego Arzu Garcia Granados. I pronounced it correctly. Very well. Very well. For those who might not know you, as the podcast is, is heard well, worldwide, who are you? Well, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I've been asking that <laughs> question for a long time, huh? Um... I, I'm very proud of my heritage, let's say. I come from this beautiful country, Guatemala. Uh, my family has been involved in the history of the country of the last 300 years. It's amazing. 300 years. I'm very proud of my Mayan heritage of my country. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the most uh, important cultures of, mm -hmm. hum of the human civilization and But it's the most thing that attracts me the most is that there is not a really defined theory about the Mayans. You know, it's a big mystery. And every time they do a new discovery, it changes them to another theory. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's that mystic uh, mystery, you know, that it's... And, and, and also of how great they were. They were great mathematicians, astronomers, architects. And, and, and it's just fascinating, you know, even their the, 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 the systems, how advanced they were. And, and for the time and comparing it to our era, it's, it's incredible what they accomplished at the time, you know. So you did also accomplish a lot. You're not just a businessman, but also a politician. Well, yeah, and nobody's now... perfect. <laughs> 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 and um, you were also, like for four years, I think, you were part of the Central American Parliament. I was, yes, of the Central American Parliament. Uh, an interesting experience. Mm -hmm. um, it was What was your key takeaway during that time, those four years being part of the parliament? Well, the, the thing is that you're representing a region, not only a country. Of course, I was elected from Guatemala, but you have to think... Uh, about the region, you know, how, unfortunately, it's an, it's an institution very questioned these days of its existence. Mm -hmm. um, it's similar to the European Parliament, well, right? Really, well, it was inspired, but the difference is that the, the legislation of the European Union, it's, um, it, it works for all the, all, all, the, all the member countries. Here, we're not a vinculante. I don't know how to say it in English, where you're a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So we just proposed the initiatives, and then the Congress of every country had to... Yes, I think, you know, one thing I learned of, 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 of my experiences in, in politics and also my family being involved for so long, it's really not the institutions that are bad. Mm -hmm. It's just who represents them, right? But the institutions are really there, and, and, and when we get elected, we need to make the best of it. Uh, no matter what, there are limitations, of course. The parliament had a lot of limitations, you know, of, of, of its of, uh, uh, modus operandi, mm -hmm. you know. But um, if you're elected, I, 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 and I've seen it, you know, for, for, from, from my father, that it's get things done, you know. So in the limitations that I had, I did accomplish things. I did um, uh, created the observatory for... Um, for handicap all over the region to understand the laws in their countries, um, jobs that are available for, 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 for people with special needs mm -hmm. and special talent, I will, I will say. Because, you know, when they say handicap and those words are not really, they develop uh, uh, new talents, mm -hmm. new talents through, 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 through the limit, physical limitations that they might have, but they're able to develop new ones and... And, and, and there's really no limitation, you know. Unfortunately, there is limitation for them in infrastructure. Um, also discrimination, I would say, you know, uh, uh, for many other reasons of their capacities. But they are, I think, like superheroes. Mm -hmm. 
because they managed to. I remember even meeting an artist who she had no movement in her hands and she painted with her legs and her mouth. It was an amazing artist, you know. It's amazing. It brings you to the idea of what is handicapped at the end. Exactly. Who is defining what is normal, what exactly. is not normal? The word, the word is special talents, I will guess. Ah, I, I will okay. say. That's special true. talents, you know, special talents. And, and that was quite an experience to, to see everything that is going on. I remember even in the city of Antigua, where I live right now, there was uh, this American who had an NGO where they built prothesis and wheelchairs for people with special needs in, in, in that matter. And it made a lot of sense because they knew what their needs were. Mm -hmm. And it came to a theory today that we see such a polarized world, that are left, right, and then you have the theory of the neoliberal capitalism that nothing is for free, and at the end, we all need to work. We all need to be occupied. It's part of our mental health. You know, even if it is whatever it is, we all need to be occupied. And it was interesting, even a colleague of mine from El Salvador, it's very interesting, he's, he's, and he, 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 he was from the gor uh, former guerrilla party. Wow. And he said, oh my God, how did you, how can you, how did you took me there and see how they explode all these people because they were working. <laughs> He's, well, it's, it's that, in the, but, but at the end, it's what keeps them going, you know? You need to feel important, use, useful. And to be part of the society. Exactly. If you do something, exactly. you feel also to belong to society, and you give something, exactly. and you take and you give. So this was one of the project. If I now, for some of the listeners who might not know, so um, that institution you were working for for four years consisted of representatives from... Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama. Costa Rica is not a member, but we had right. Panama, Honduras, eh, Salvador, Nicaragua, Dominican Republic. Oh, interesting. Yes, Dominican Republic was integrated. Eh, I don't know exactly the year, but yes, they're a member of, of, of the parliament. How many members, how, is consistent, the parliament is consisting of how many members? So it's 22 per country. Per country? Yeah, 22 members per country, and all, all elected. Why is Costa Rica not a member of that? Costa Rica, it's always been a, a, a I don't know if it's the wrong, I'm not in politics, I'll say <laughs> the right, they're quite snobbish <laughs> to the region. You know, they, they, they do, well, they have a solid democracy, I would do say, yeah, you know, uh, a country that they, yeah, they feel different from the region for some reason. They even um, call themselves the Switzerland of the Americas. And that's true. When I was traveling to Costa Rica, I was astonished about the price level and what you get in return. It reminded me of Switzerland, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, but, but what are you talking, the social... No, the cost of living and what you receive, yeah. like accommodation, like those things that you need when you travel, right? You can see it's a very high, they reach a very high price level. Yes, they, 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 they do. It's actually, I think, their economy is based on tourism. They do have a strong social security. I, I, I do applaud them for that. Um, they have, what is it, I think, five million people. It's a small country. And, and the interesting thing is that during the colonies, Costa Rica was never, ever mentioned. Right. You know, it was until the Germans, uh, uh, with the coffee, which I think it was one of the best parts of our history in Central America, it was the immigration of Germany, that the country was developed, the region was developed. From, and, and also interesting to see in this region, Kovan, they, 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 the, the Mayans there, they learned German before Spanish. Yes. Really? They really integrated very, very, very well mm. with, 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 with Germany as uh, um, I wouldn't say colonial at the time because yeah we were a republic but that immigration that came from, from it's you. very flattering to know this because I'm German so I really take it as a kind of well oh, made admire, in Germany compliment I do admire very much uh, 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 Germany I think it's really an example of a country and now that you mention it it's just how your history we all have dark sides in our history it's, it's, it's impossible just to blame one nation but what I did admire, and I remember going to Berlin in 2002, after the yeah, fall of the, of the Berlin Wall, and I remember walking, how explaining the monuments and, and, and the architecture of the buildings of the city was the picture, how you were before the war, how you ended up in the war, but you move forward. Mm -hmm. 
You know, and that's, I think, something very important that today that we're going backwards. Mm. You know, if you see, we're, we're, we're in such an advance in technology and everything, but we're like in the Middle Ages. Tolerance is something that is totally gone. Now it's religion, like the Middle Ages, religion, race. Uh, I would like to say that Germany is making an exception there, but we just spoke in the last couple of days a lot about politics, also mm -hmm. like in Germany, and I do view it on risk. So I do not view us, our society in Germany, being as open and as tolerant as I would have loved to see that there. So there was also like a kind of development happening in my point of view, which now after traveled a while, I think it's a worldwide movement. Unfortunately, we are losing diversity. That's my personal point of view. Like people are aligning worldwide, their mindsets are aligning. Maybe it is linked to the iPhone, the connection to certain media sources. Um, I think you can see it because worldwide the numbers of spoken languages are diminishing, they are reducing, they are going down. Interesting. I, 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 I did not see it that way, but, 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 but it's, this is the thing when you say that about languages, Guatemala has 23 languages. Yes, it's amazing. They have been going on oof, forever. Since the beginning of the Mayan civilization, I don't know how, if they're dialects from that original language, but it was still spoken, I don't know exactly that, but it's interesting when you mention the identity, because here there was a colony, there was a conquest, but they kept it. And this is something I do admire very much about, about you know, I, 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 I'm not, I cannot say I'm a big art collector, but I do like art. And I've been collecting from local artists, especially indigenous. And I'll show you this piece, which I think is fascinating, that I just got. And it's from this local artist. He's very well known worldwide today, international. And he's from Guatemala. And he's from Guatemala. He's indigenous. Mayan from um, San Pedro, Atitlan, which you have mm -hmm. been. He's from San Pedro. And all of his art is about healing the history oh. of... of of his people. I, I think if you... And this is... Wow. So, so, so there was a decree, by wow. decree, in 1870, by a president called Reina Barrios, who was from the region of San Marcos, which was Mayan indigenous, like you know, the 65%. And by decree, he said that they were no longer indigenous, they were Ladinos. Mm. So as a protest, he painted himself wow. with blonde hair, as you can see. A self-portrait. A self-portrait Yes, and then he asked me, what do you see in it? And I said, what a great question. Can you imagine not having identity, like you mentioned today? If we don't have identity, we're lost. Mm -hmm. And by decree, they prohibit their identity. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the mistakes that we have to accept in our history, you know, of, of, of to, to be able to heal and move on, mm -hmm. you know. But I think that the mistake today is that they want to go and turn down monuments. Yes. For, for so that way people can heal. And, and the, how I was, I think our generation was raised is monuments are to remind us what happened in history and how far we have accomplished, right? But bringing them down is not going to heal or change history or erase it. And the problem with erasing history, it's, it repeats itself. I love that remarkable a lot. And I think it's also linked to the idea of staying in a victim role. Because when you're a victim, you're morally superior. It's very interesting. When you're a victim, you're morally superior. It's I a think very interesting way how, how, how you put it, and it's right. It creates but, a lot of problems. Uh, problems, yes. <laughs> no, 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 but it's really the victim, it's always the, yeah, yeah. Always wins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the victims always wins. Yeah. I would like to go back to this region where we're right now in, Central America. While looking for flights, I learned that it's quite difficult to get from one country to the next, like Nicaragua, to Costa Rica, whatever. It's possible, but it costs almost a fortune, different to the Asian region. That brought me to the question, to what extent is there a kind of cooperation? Me coming from the European Union, hmm? you yeah, can yeah. discuss the idea whether it's good or not, but still there was a union. To what extent is the cooperation between the different Central American countries here possible, realized? On the future, even. In so I think that you know, there, the, remember that we, we have, it's like the European Union. You know, there was after the collapse of the Soviet bloc, there was uh, the hope of globalization, and 
And everybody was, let's say the world was very optimistic and excited about it. And, you know, we had the 90s were quite a golden age, I, 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 I will say. And Central America, the curious thing is that really, so Central America during the colonies was Guatemala. And it was Guatemala, of course, Salvador, a little bit of Salvador, Honduras, and Nicaragua, um, part of it. Then when we got the independence... We which was in each, which year? The independence was in 1821. Mm -hmm. We stayed together, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. Nicaragua was always independent, you know? It's, it's, I, I, I'm not very much familiar with Nicaragua, but we stayed together in the Union, and then... Um, Chiapas was part of Guatemala, too. Which is now part of Mexico. Part of Mexico. They, yeah, they took it from us. So it's like the older brother bully. <laughs> the U.S. took Texas and Arizona from the U.S. From, from, yeah, the U.S. took it from Mexico, and then Mexico took Chiapas from us. And uh, we took, I think, something from El Salvador. I don't know exactly, or, or, or we got into El Salvador. And this was an ancestor of mine, actually, General Manuel Arzu en Najera, but my grandfather always joked that he was a big drunk, that he stayed through the, through the liquor company, <laughs> and that's why they never accomplished it. <laughs> never accomplished the, the, the mission. Mm -hmm. But you see, all of us, we have strong identity. Salvador is a very, I, it's, 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 the people there are just amazing. Very hardworking uh, um, We call them chispudos, very bright, you know, mm -hmm. with, with, with what they do. And Honduras has another identity. Uh, Nicaragua has great poets, great uh, uh, writers, musicians. So we all have our different, being so small, we all have our, our own identity. Nowadays, I don't see where the union is going, especially, again, like what happened with with the Cold War, our countries were the battlefields, yeah. you know, and, and we put the, the, the victims of that war. So now it's interesting that now they're judging, you know, they're making all these huge cases about the crimes of war. I'm going to ask you a question, and to all of your, 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 your audience, what war is not criminal? How can you judge? A, I mean, if we're going to do that, then let's blame the ones who started it, right? So you were talking like when I was in Guatemala City, I passed the Congress. And in front of the Congress, opposite on the buildings, I could see like papers, pictures of people in black and white that were said like just vanished, were killed or whatever. Mm. And I think part of the population here are some NGOs are asking for recognition of viewing this as a genocide? Are you also talking about that? Well, I think part of that is because this is the thing, and, 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 and with the genocide, for what I understood about genocide and the definition, if we yeah. read it, and it's when you want to exterminate a specific race. Yeah. Here we had a civil war. It was never about I'm going to end up the Quiches or the Sutuils or the Quechis. It was a civil war of two fractions from the army, one that was obedient to Western world and the other one to the Soviet Union. And the victims, really, which I think it's... And, and, and I saw it. I saw it after the... The Civil War, the, my, my father was president at the time, and he ended up the Civil War. And I remember going to... Well, a, he was in power when the Civil War ended. Yes, he was the one who signed the which year? with the guerrillas, 1996. Mm -hmm. And uh, seeing the victims there, that, you know, they, they're totally in another world compared to us, to the Western world that we are today, you know, and I cannot imagine for them the confusion, you know, of what, what we have done, you know, and they didn't understand what was going on, and they were the victims. Well, we all were victims. We all have a victim in our families that was, my uncle was kidnapped by the guerrillas at the time. And it was a very harsh moment. Also, my childhood, I remember attending the American school and 
there was a, a gorilla uh, in the neighborhood next door to the school. There was a gorilla f- uh, a bomb factory that the army intercepted, and they started to fight. And we were, I was eight years old. Yeah. And hearing the bombs and, uh, you know, and not being able to leave the school and seeing the anxiety of the teachers, the principal, and the entire school. We were like, what, a thousand students at the time? And, and, and it's something that, yeah, it's going to be there for the rest of my life. That, you know, and, and you know what's the most curious thing? That we as Guatemalans, we got used to it, you know, of living with that tension for that time. And, 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 and seeing, you know, foreign friends when I tell the story, then I realize, wow, that was, that was bad, mm-hmm. you know? It's not normal. Mm-hmm. So I cannot imagine for the, in the, the indigenous Mayans at the time of the war living in the highlight, highlight uh, being victims of these two world powers imposing their system and fighting their war I mean, in our country. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and just create, and not only that, created a huge division in the nation. But if we're going to respond, someone has to be responsible of the crimes of war that they want to go there now. I think it would be the two powers who sold the weapons, who created this fraction of the world, you know? I think the assumption that it is not just only happening in this region, no, no, no. it's a worldwide phenomenon. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. And that is, that, is, that, is, that is frightening. I mean, that brings me to another question. I um, remember a couple of days ago, I checked to which countries you are exporting and from which country you are importing the most. So the biggest import is coming from the US. Of course. Yeah? So it's a big, there is a big economical connection. And I think the Russian is in the third or in the fourth um, position already when it comes to import. Import, do we import from Russia? Yes. Oh, I did not know that. But, but, yeah. but what do we import from Russia? I would we, know this. This is the dark knowledge. But I think it, it was pretty high. I was astonished that it is, that is, there's so much. Huh. Yeah. This is when you start half knowledge. Is, well, I know there is, uh, Russians are uh, investing in mining here. Yeah. Uh, but I did not know that. But yeah, that's that's a surprise. Yes, export our number one export because yes, we have coffee, we have sugar, but our number one export is well, people. Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> very, it's good. very sad, but yeah. it's 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 and and and, <laughs> and 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 they go to the United States. I'm so happy you mentioned this because Guatemala, unfortunately, is a country where people want to go away. Right? It's. It is. Some, some people want to go, and they in the U.S. I think there are two or three million people living in the U.S. Something like that. Two, two to three million, I think. And, and yes, they, they, they are a big part of the economy today, of the money, the remises that they send. But this is the thing that, you know, everybody wants to go to the U.S. in the world. And it's not only us. The U.S. was created of immigrants from all over the world. It's really a nation that people want to work They make it. It, it. it gives it gives the tools and 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 it's been a, and, and it's 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 part of their history, you know. And one has to say, I mean, Guatemala. There's just Mexico in between, and then there is the U.S. Yes. It's very tempting yes. for us in Europe. It's like oh, there is a big big water piece in between. But here you can literally you can go in a car to the U.S. Yes. Yeah, yes. It's so close. It's very close. Yeah. And so, 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 yes, it's, it's logical that it's our number one. And even our exports, the majority of our exports go to the United States. So we have a big history with, with the United States. We, did have a, we have a big history also with Germany. And after the war, the Second World War, well, the, the, the Americans took over. And this is very interesting. The Germans were not allowed to have properties in Guatemala. After Explicitly, it was just bl- against the German. There was a rule yes. saying no. Well, you know, I, Pure discrimination. I, even, I, even, I even saw, so we had a dictator. Uh, he was a, a, a fascist sim, 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 sympathizer. And uh, I saw pictures of 19, I think, 36. A German aid boat came to Guatemala. Uh, Nazi, you know, at the time, and they marched in 
Avenida Reforma with the Nazi flag, and there was a big ceremony at the German club. So there was, there was, and this is the thing. Guatemala was going the right track, if you see economically in development. I think, and, 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 and the numbers say it, and the history shows it was, a, it was like a golden age in the country, golden age in, in, in the region. What would need to happen to make Central American America more powerful? What would you say to make this whole region becoming more seen on an international level? Like we spoke roughly before, and you said, yes, also Guatemala. A lot of people don't know the beauty of the country. I would say it applies the same to Nicaragua and the other countries as well. Yes. So how, what would be your key solution to somehow show that potential? I speak not only of Guatemala right now, but of this whole region here. Of the region? I think, you know, the media, the, the media in, the, in the powerful nations have pl play a big part, you know, and definitely we're not interested enough for uh, news, and when we're interested, it's only the negative side. Mm -hmm. You know, definitely the good things never come out. And there was a survey a long time comparing tourism in Guatemala and Costa Rica. The tourists that goes to Costa Rica never comes back because they sell themselves. Mm. The people, their expectations are really high. Mm. In Guatemala, the expectations are so negative that when they come, they say, oh, my God, what's going on here? You know? And, and it's not only, and I think the region, the entire region, I, I've been to all the countries in Central America, and they all are beautiful. Uh, geographically, and they all have a charm. And I think, again, that, that what really makes a nation attractive for investment, tourism, it's the people. And, and many friends that come to visit and, and as tourists or, or in investment, they, they mention that. It's, Guatemala has really, uh, the people are professional, are polite, Work ethics, are very hardworking people, and and, and 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 I hope some someday, someone really recognize that worldwide. I also met a beautiful experience a couple of days ago. I mentioned that before. It was at the GG market. I loved it. There were so beautiful. many different cultural backgrounds, and it's you could see that crowd, yeah. it's beautiful, and the colors, and the vibes, and the material. And those handmade stuff, I mean, of course, you can see technology is also entering there. So maybe a couple of years ago, everything would have been sued handmade. Mm -hmm. But still, it's, it's amazing. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I bought many things. This is why I arrived here with a lot of bags. You couldn't just stop because it's so special. There are products you cannot see somewhere else. I have a couple more few questions for you. Yes. You were, or you are, or you were the son of a president here of Guatemala. Yes. So I would say, wow, how is this, being the son of a president? Was there a period in your life where you were viewed as just the son of the president? How was it to get out of this role and to s create a known personality? Or would you say you were old enough already and this was his part of your dad? So how was it, so your this experience? Is the, this is the, it's a very good question, and I'm glad that you asked it because um, I have also a friend of mine that his father was president, and we were talking, it's... Nobody talks about the families, you know, and, and, and everything you do can affect them, you know, and today, especially today, there's no ethics. At least when my father was president, there was a little bit more of ethics about, you know, not getting the families involved. And Which year was it again? It 96, 96 to, to 2000. But yes, you are unfortunately uh, always going to be a target. So everything that you, it's, it's, it's all about them. Mm. You know, it's hard to have your own identity there. You must have been, I just calculated in the meantime, sorry to interrupt, something like 23 years old, right? I was in, yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Like today. <laughs> <laughs> the same so age. 23, yeah? Yeah, 20, 24, yes, 24. 23, 24, so yeah. what do you remember? What were the unpleasantries like you had maybe to have? I don't know, security guys around you. You had to The privacy, the privacy that all eyes are always, uh, not on him, but also on, on you. You know, it's, it do has its benefits to you. I mean, <laughs> I mean, especially the people that you meet, you know, yeah. I, 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 I met Fidel Castro, for example. No way. Yes, I did. You didn't tell me. Yes, wow. I did. And you know what? I'm very, wow. so I just moved. 
from how from my house and had my stuff for two years. Then COVID hit and in storage, and I cannot find that picture. I will die. Yes, oh, in his no. office, and it was the time that he still dressed with his uniform. And I mean, I would not never dream of meeting Fidel Castro, or you know, meeting. Went to, with my father to a state visit in France with President Chirac, uh, wow. a true uh, a statesman and a gentleman, fascinating mm-hmm. meeting him, a really fantastic politician. I think I really do admire him very much and, and how he, he treated us. It was, unfortunately, you know, then I went to Paris as a tourist <laughs> and it was horrible. <laughs> you can imagine that, you know, after seeing Shams and you say, with all the flags of Guatemala, you know, and, and all this, yeah, French hospitality that was something. Uh, also another character that I do admire him very much, and it's so unfair how they destroying him. Someone who did so much, King Juan Carlos of Spain. Uh, a, a great, I find him a great leader, great, great leader. And if you see what he did for Spain, uh, it's so unfair what they're doing to him right now. Because at the end, people forget that you're human. You know, they, it, it's idolizing that position of a leader. But we're all human at the same time, you know? And, 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 and people just see the privileged side. It's, it's not. Mm. I think it's more the negative side that that privilege. What I'm t- telling you, but the good side is superficial, but also seeing the tension in constant tension of stress in my father, and, 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 and it was all about that. Even if you had an issue that you wanted to share with your father, I said, I'll wait because he's going through that, you know? It's family becomes second, and, 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 and the media just shows the privileged side, but I, don't, I feel that every family of a politician today will agree with me. Mm-hmm. It's not pleasant. <laughs> it's not. It's not enough. Have you seen your dad changing in that time? Have you seen how also this impacted him as a person? And maybe even you could see a change in the relationship towards you as a son because maybe he was too busy or his mind was somewhere else. Was there any, any, any change you recognized? The thing is that my father was always involved, you know, in, 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 in part. He was an amazing father. I'm very grateful to have him as a father. I, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. he was really... Really an amazing dad. I do miss him a lot. And, and my child passed away, right? At- yes, four years ago. And, and, and as a child, you know, he was the first minister of tourism. So I had the opportunity to go all over the country with him. Wow. I went to Tikal when I was five years old. Mm. He was also the mayor of Guatemala City, right? He was mayor. Yes, he had a political career all his life. So, so we were always... The thing is that as a child, you don't, you don't feel it. When you're in your teens... And as a grown-up person, it's, it's, you're definitely a target. Are you also kind of a target for women or partners, potential partners, as the son of a president? Could you see that your private social status was somehow more attractive for others to be in contact with you because of the role of your dad? Of course. This is, this is the thing that we it's joke. A question, yes, so but this is... So This is, no, you know, and it's very interesting, very interesting. You know, there's always when you're there, I don't know if you heard that expression, muerto el rey, vive el rey. I think I understand what it is. Yeah, so when you're, so definitely, when you're in power, you know, everybody wants to be your friend. And I don't understand why, because I never really had power of anything, you know. (laughs) But people, for some reason, feel attracted for that. And then the day he left, like we were joking, the day he turned his position to the next president, he had to go back to the house in taxi, almost, you know, because there was nobody waiting for him, you know. So it is, it is um, yes, it's, it's, it's that superficial part of humanity, you know, that people feel attractive by that. Let me go into this because I think that's a very interesting point. I've asked myself very often, why is it that power is so attract, uh, attractive to others or even to ourselves? That's a very good question. What is it that humanity is always going around power? We spoke over breakfast about suppression, yeah? 
being superior. I mean, if you look back in the worldwide history, it's always the same thing. Incas, the Spanish, the conquerors, women, men. There's so much about the role of suppression, which has, which has to do with power, I would say. Look at what role CEOs are fulfilling. A lot of them, those I met, there's also this idea of being in power, being a leader. What would you say, humanity think, and power? I think, I, th I think humanity, we are, all, we are designed to be lead, uh, lead, you know? You think we are designed to be I think we are. I so think, you think we need a leader? I think there's, and we need control. Oh, oh, oh. I think we need a leader like we need control. Oh, we're animals. Are we born like this? Huh? Or do you, are we born or we're educated into that? That's a very good question, but I think... It's good. Look, look at the, our, our, our history. There was always one leading. There's always going to be someone stronger than us or someone more intelligent than us. And, and, and it's a survival instinct too, I think, to have someone to lead us. But humanity has so developed in the last centuries. Could we not just get out of this? There is no need to run away because, because there's a tiger around this the corner. That's the question that I, that, 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 that I, that, that, that I think we, we all have to ask. If we're so advanced today and we're having race, racial yeah. problems, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So that's why we, the conclusion is we need to be controlled. Definitely. If not, we kill, kill ourselves. We're capable of accomplishing it. And even the Mayans, you know, how can you explain? And this is something that intrigues me very much. They, were, they invented the zero. They were great mathematicians, great architects, but they did human sacrifices. Yeah. And it's the same with us too. Those contradictions you can find in these days as well. The oh, world totally. is full of contradictions. Yes, totally. Even we ourselves, we are full of contradictions. Yeah. Um, you said something I would like now to go in. Um, if I recall correctly, you said like the institution themselves, the political institutions, when we have spoken about the Central American Parliament, they are not the issue and the problem. It's no, the institutions are not the is, problem. Is then, my question would be, who is it? Is it the human people, behind and their democracy, weaknesses? Democracy doesn't work. Of course it works. It's the first system. But it's how, who, 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 who leads it? It's the problem. You but know? who leads them? They are humans. We just spoke about weakness of humans. Do We're you then human. need to surrender also their weaknesses, the weaknesses of the leaders? The we I think the weaknesses of the leaders and the intentions of the leaders these days. The, today it's about really the intention of the leaders because I think every time more, and it's worldwide, they're mercenaries, not politicians, you know, not really leaders. It's just about fulfilling egos, power, like we mentioned, money, to money. And this is the thing that, you know, we were talking with another friend and money has always been what moves the world, even since the beginning. You know, it's always been about money, but at least there was more ethics or they hide it. Morals. Today, people for money will do whatever it takes. They don't care. It's all about money today, like in your face. You know, it's And, 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 and if you see, where is it taking us? <laughs> Brunella. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry Diego's I, having two amazing dogs. So one is just... Uh, very territorial. Low, very territorial. I learned that. very small and she thinks, you it's know... crazy. If, if we could show it, she's... Powerful. Yes, powerful. A, a little Napoleon because she's barking to a huge German shepherd. <laughs> If so. you see the big dog and the small one, you think it's crazy, <laughs> but still powerful. Yes. Um, question I had is, do you think it was ever different in human history? Now you just said it was about power, ego, and money, like values. Maybe at the time where there was no currency uh, applied, which is just a substitute for something you want. People were always like, like again, my question, has this changed? Is the... Motivation to lead I, in the wrong way, has this changed or was it ever? Well, I think we see it today and it's with systems. And they always say there was a time that they wanted, and it makes sense, like the Nordic countries, they have incredible social systems. Mm -hmm. And it's about collectivity, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's about collectivity. And why it never worked here. 
And I think it has to do with weather. Can you imagine in those countries, winter, winter is coming, so I have the chicken and you have the pig, so let's try to, you know. Here in the hamaca, the, the banana falls off the tree, you know. So it's very individualism. And, 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 and it's for weather. I think it's even sad, like, one could imagine, right now we are in a very tropical zone. I can see myself just laying here in the shadow. I'm not very productive, right? Mm -hmm. I can feel myself like when I'm back home and there's winter time, I do more. I'm more efficient. When there's summertime, a lot of distraction. You go out, again, it's hot. You don't feel so comfy. You sleep bad. Things like this. Mm -hmm. so there is surely a link to that. Um, it's more a survival instinct, you know, and, and, and that it is. The weather, yeah. it's also, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the sun, yeah. the sun makes us more lazy because... Diego, a question that is ongoing in my mind since a while. What requires a really good leader? Assuming humanity really needs to be having a good leader, what would be you who know many leaders, politicians, what would you say are the key qualities that you've seen in humans that would really qualify, qualify them for being a justified leader? Without becoming too idealistic. Like no, realistic no, no. Before. I think, you know what, it's a good leader. Yeah. And for what I have seen, and even history, you know, it's someone that says, let's all go, you know, and listens to, uh, listens to rounds by the best minds. And listen, leaders, leaders need to, re are representing the people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you need to listen. And you need to understand really what's the need, not your needs. Mm -hmm. And I think the great leaders were that. And, and the history has shown that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why for some reason people f follow them because they're leading them of, mm -hmm. they need their needs, you know? But how do I know whether it comes out of the, because you mentioned it before, this is where I go in. How do we know that it comes out of the right motivation? That is a good question today because today we have a lot of actors er out there in, in populism, you know, offering, and especially very responsible in developing countries, offering things that they know they could never accomplish. But I cannot, I mean, when you're in need, you want to hear that hope that someone is going to solve all your problems. Um, it's, it's, it's very strange today to see, like, for example, Fidel Castro. What, what, what made people follow Fidel Castro, you know? What made people, and, and if you see that story, he went in the Brahma boat from Yucatan. They almost sank. There were four people. What the people, because people weren't happy, you know? People weren't happy with the reality and, 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 the, and, the, and the, at the time, the current authorities. Maybe he had star and whip quality. There must be some, like, also Hitler, he was charismatic nonetheless. Of course. So, this, that, that, this is the thing, that today, history, it's all money. For some reasons, people support them, you know. People weren't happy with the system in Germany at the time. And Hitler was the first one to say how horrible the system is saying. This is all BS. Uh, 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 people identify with him. Then we are back to the weaknesses of humanity because mm -hmm. then we have mass population manipulation. If you know how you can manipulate the mass, which I think is pretty easy. And it's very dangerous because, dangerous. Dangerous because the people, and, and, and this is something I learned in politics. Today they love you and tomorrow they hate you, <laughs> you know? It's not, it's, 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 like a, it's like a lottery, you know? One day you win, the next day you lose. And, and I really do not think that once they all get elected, they all want to do it good, that they have different styles, yes. But at the end, they know that their survival is to do their job good. And then sometimes you have to take decisions, like my father used to tell me all the time. Like 90% of the decisions I take, it's one bad and one is less bad. But then you have to be what is the right thing to do, you know? So I think for and you a good leader is communicating, listen, we're going to go through a hard time yeah. by making this decision. But... And in developing countries, the problem, Pico, Pico, in developing countries, sorry. Pico is the second dog I was just about yeah, to say about to love, and yeah. she wants to get a wife. She's now lying on my foot. Yes, it's, yes, it's, yes. it's love, right? It's love, yes, yes, very much, very much. <laughs> and yeah. so, so, so you see, it's, it's really, I think, 
Today the world is so confused. And again, I don't think systems are the problem. It's just where humans have taken the systems. Interesting aspect. Never thought to about question, to, 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 to start questioning them, you know, if they work or not. It's just how we have manipulated them or abused from them mm. that it's uncertain where we're going today, with democracy especially, oh. you know, with democracy. Then you see, you know, like Chavez, okay, yeah, he's horrible. But he was elected by the people. You know, Hitler was elected by the people. I would go in and ask myself, did they elect them by really pure free will? I'm asking myself to what extent... I think it's anger. Anger, anger but against... Are they conscious sometimes whom they elect? Do they... There is information out there, but we've spoken in our practice as well about the media influence. What is... I think very interesting is always like, what did you not say? Also, when you just talk to a person, What is the person not saying? What is the media not That's saying? Right. And if you just leave away half of the truth, you have a different truth, right? You said it very well uh, early, I think yesterday. It's how, with COVID, for example, there's something strange about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not a com conspiracy theory. I like facts. But if you see the facts, there's definitely a manipulation on the situation. Mm -hmm. And like you said, in Indonesia, a farmer understands it, but then you go to the developed countries, like in your country, they don't because the media told them. And so, so in the ideology, you know, yeah. the institutions are always right, and they forget about lobbyism, for example, as one aspect. Diego, I would like to dig into something um, that you um, mentioned yesterday. It's about love, yes. if you wouldn't mind. So you love men. Yes. The first idea is, a, it's a pity. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This it's is a funny. pity. Why do those yeah. men that are the most charismatic I, and the most white... I wonder, I wonder if I would have been straight, you would not say that about me. It's no. always, we want what we don't have. That's true. The caress of the neighbor is always yes. lusher. Yeah. But, but, but no. Yeah? No, no. I really meant it like this. It's, it's maybe, now it's a very big uh, prejudice, but somehow you feel comfy because it's not like this typical, I track you, I, I want to go. Eh? So it's, it's something that provides comfort, I would say. Maybe this is why the reaction came, it's a pity. Yes. So tell me. I thought it was because of my looks. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I mentioned this, it's also because of the looks. <laughs> how was it? Um, how was it for you to discover that? And how was it to... Um, say this here in Guatemala where I assume it's still not so openly discussed as in some western part of the world how was it to say that to your parents? Well, you know, it was I'm not going to bore you with the whole story, but it's something that I always, I knew it I a, kind of knew it all my life, but the thing is that when, it, when you're a child you don't know about sex so Uh, when I started to understand about sex, my attraction was to men, but then you, society shows you, and especially at the time, it was seen as mental problem, and, and I did a lot of research, you know, about it. I went to psychologists. I, 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 I said, why is this shit happening? Why is this thing happening to me, you know? So you thought you were wrong. Well, of course I did, because that's what society tells you to do. And, and I was raised to have a, you know, to a stereotype, you get married, then you have your family. And I said, I can't believe I'm not going to be able to do that. So it was a, I went through a lot of confusion about it until a very wise, this is very funny. <laughs> so I did by accident in Miami, I went with my grandmother to mass and I was... <laughs> And I was, it was a full mass, and I'm not a practicing Catholic. I do believe in God, but I, so then, and then, the, I was next to the confession, uh -huh. <laughs> the priest came out, do you want to confess? And, and I felt bad saying no to a priest, and I said, okay. And I told him, and, I, and, and the way I confessed to him, it was through a negative way, and said, no, no, wait, God loves you. Wow. God loves you for who you are, and this changed my perspective about it. This was his reaction. Yes. 
a Catholic priest? Yes. We in were Miami. in which year? Well, Miami is a very big gay community, you know, so probably he got a lot of... Yeah, so it was in the got, 90s. And it was, was in the 90s. It was in, in the oh, yeah, yeah. 1994. Yeah. And I remember it, it was such a pleasant conversation I had with him and how he, how important it was for me to see another perspective. Oh, so good. And of course, I went through, through therapy. It, it wasn't an easy process. But the thing that I'm very proud mm -hmm. is that I really discovered myself through trying, I'm very happy I did not ruin a woman's life just by pretending, which happens a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, that my decision, I, I, I'm proud that I stick to my cause, you know, and, 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 and living an honest life. It was hard, yes, my family was very hard. But then, you know, I had my, my, my partner of 12 years and my family ended up loving him. And, and so I was very blessed to, to after the, the rain, the sun, the sun came out, you know. And yes, it has changed. I think also I did it during my father's term, and I thought in my innocent mind that it was going to be better so they wouldn't attack politically. Of course they did. <laughs> oh, so you made it public. Yes. Or did you? Well, not. I never. I mean, now we are talking. You know, this is the. Topic. This is actually the first time I've. Talk, I've never given an interview. I learned from the Queen. No <laughs> interviews. <laughs> I'm so blessed today. Right. I said so, you. I'm excited. Yeah, it never because at the end you don't really have to explain about sex is private. Mm -hmm. You know, and now I see the LGBT, which is they have a really start like a, with a good cause, like all causes today. <laughs> All causes that you see, they start with a good cause, but when they start to get politized, it's when they ruin their cause. The, 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 the cause is lost, yeah, you know? Good point. Very good point. And, and but sex is private. Nobody has to explain, especially if you're a politician. I'm not into, actually, can you imagine if politicians today explain their sexual life? How horrible. I mean, health was also private once. This has one also changed. Interesting. The Canadian yeah. prime minister, he's a handsome guy. <laughs> or the prime minister of, of Denmark, she's very beautiful too. But then the rest, it's something that, it's, it's, it's a subject that is politized. I'm very happy to see even friends of mine that have gay kids, how they have at least, at least made them open their eyes to see it can, it can happen to me and... Yeah, it's a natural thing. And, and, and at the end, what every parent, I'm not a parent, but I know that the most unconditional love comes from a parent. And a parent always wants his kids to be happy, right? What was for you the key game changer when it came to the conversation vis-a-vis -vis your parents? Because you already said it's a traditional political family. I assume it was not easy telling them. Was there any argument that might also help some part of the audience here? Because the problem you faced, others have. Was it like to, to, what was it? Well, the first thing is that I was dating a very beautiful lady. Frustrated me not to love her. Mm -hmm. Because and then is when I realized this is not me. I cannot lie to her, you know. It's, and so she was the first one to know. And ironically, she was the only one that supported me at the beginning. Wow. And then my, um, I remember my father, I said, do you think if there was a pill or a treatment, who wants to be rejected? Nobody wants to be rejected. And society nowadays, no. But at the time, it was, being gay was being rejected. Who wants to be rejected? You know? So I think that the world has accomplished a lot on that, in, in, in that matter, has really move forward with that and understanding. Unfortunately, again, they're politicizing it. Like for here, today, the, there was a law that they were passing with gay marriage yeah, and abortion. Gay. Yeah. gay people don't abort. <laughs> <laughs> today, gay couples that have kids are the most wanted children in the world. Am I wrong? They really want the children. So what, why did you put abortion with that? But then you talk to the community, they have like this global structure that is nonsense. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I hope I don't offend them, but I, I think they're losing track of what the purpose is. Mm -hmm. 
you know. And definitely a, a minority will never impose on a majority. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy. Speaking of purpose, the last subject I'd like to touch before I have three final questions for you, Diego, mm -hmm. is um, we spoke about passion out on the terrace, and you mentioned that you are now into the film business, and I could see your eyes shining. <laughs> and we spoke just shortly about your mom, and she's an artist. Yes. And I ask, uh, to what extent you would like to realize your artistic parts that you have within you also in this film project, and what is the idea behind? So what I learned, like, you went to Antigua, this beautiful old city here in Guatemala, and there was just recently a filmmaking of an international film star. Yes, so, so film always intrigued me, you know? I always enjoy it very much. Um, it's actually... It was all coincidence, you know. Um, I was, I'm going to be 50 very soon. And I think I'm at the point, yeah, to just accomplish what makes me happy, mm -hmm. you know. And I wish I had this attitude right now when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Because it was always a stereotype or doing things for acceptance, you know. This career is, you know. But now, at, at, at this point, it was all a coincidence. Uh, there is this wonderful American guy who is building a studio in, in the city that I just moved here in Guatemala, and they have eight films. Is it in Antigua? In Antigua, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And this is the third film of the eight they have for the, for the year. They're low budgets, from $1 million to $4 million. dollars. So it's, it's just when the... Uh, los, As the, uh, the, the stars align, you know, I think it's being at the right time at the right place. And, and yes, I'm very excited. He invited me to participate in his project, and I'm very excited to do it. I have a, what, what, my favorite thing in life is people. I, even for the pandemic. Are I've you not tired people. of them sometimes because of the weaknesses? But, you know, I love all, I have all sorts of friends, you know, I, 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 I love, I, I, I think my, my education has to be from learning from, from humans. all from humans and all sorts of, of, of people. But then it fits perfectly well because film industry is telling stories. Yes. And it's a very modern way of telling stories. It was not there 200 years ago. No, really. Yes. And I think you mentioned also this is a great opportunity also for the country you love. Yes. Well, yeah to show parts that are not known abroad. Like when I sent pictures, I told you, from the Titi market, people didn't know, even know where to locate those pictures to. This is the thing that I think today, uh, um, well, yes, it's definitely an industry. What I saw, the numbers of what they spend in the city, economically, it's, it's a win-win for everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and an industry that doesn't destroy the environment or... You know, there has to do contracts with government or always the, you know, the crazy things today. Um, it's, 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 it's a very noble industry that does a lot of good for the nation. That's definitely a fact. And there's also a country that has so much stories to tell. You know, we have so much history that people don't know. And we have a strong identity, not only from the Mayan civilization, but also from the mix of, of the creation of... of, of Yeah, the new guys, I hear it when they say the conquest, then, mm -hmm. oh, it was, it's, it's the first, it was globalization started to, to start, you know, in this part of the world. Like before they did in Asia, and there are good things, there are bad things, like everything, but there's always been a power always superior at the time than the other ones, and it is, wars is something that I think Do you think it's a part that we need them or it's a bad necessary created by humans? That is the question that I think we should all ask. I need another podcast episode yes, with you that about that. Diego, you know, the final last three questions, maybe your short answer to them. What do you wish you could real life in your lifetime? What can I want? What can you wish or what would you wish to relive in your lifetime? You just wanted to have more time to answer the question. Yeah, sorry. Um, you know, I think just, I think it's a hard question to answer because I have had so many wonderful experiences, but they already happen, you know. Mm -hmm. 
and they're not going to happen again. It's just keep, no keep, 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 on going, keep going to have that, that wonderful experience again in a new, in a new way. I love that. Yeah. Perfect answer. Yeah. It took me a long time to go because I was always, oh, I wish I go back here. I wish I was, you know. And it's, and it's like growing up. It's like growing up, you know, getting old. Every, 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 every time in life, life is beautiful. We have, it's just how we take advantage of it or how we appreciate. Mm. But there's always a beautiful moment in life and, and I think in a different stage of life. And right now your dog is snoring. I can feel it because <laughs> he's sleeping. No, 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 leave him. It's, it's love. I love it's that. Love. It's so sweet. Yeah, she's so sweet. Girl. <laughs> Second question. <laughs> What would you do if one day you woke up and every person was just gone without a trace? I'd be very sad. And I think I can go crazy, especially with the people I love. I would be, oof, I cannot even imagine. Yeah, I cannot even imagine. So what would forward thinking be your next step? Moving forward? Mm -hmm. My next step, what, if that happened? Yeah, if this terrible thing happened. I don't know if I will be able to survive it, <laughs> to be honest. It's the social connection, it's the connection. Yeah. It's, it's, well, I mean... One thing is for sure in this life is death. You know, we're all going to leave. It's the only thing sure. Um, but there's always... I like meeting new people all the time. Like I met you. I met you. Yes, so and I love this. I, 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 I really enjoy I learned so much from you. Oh, it was me who learned <laughs> no, you. Please. so charming. Yes, it's, 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 you know, that's the beauty of life. That's the beauty of life, I guess. And, and, and we forget about it. Maybe this is also an answer then my final last question, Diego. What makes you happy? What makes me happy? My dogs. I was just thinking about <laughs> it. I saw you in the happy. pool, it's amazing, full of love. They And you wrapped them yesterday happy. night with the towels, they're trying it. Yeah, they, they make, there are many things that make me happy. A good conversation, yeah. and, uh, seeing the people that I love. Uh, going to the beach, you know, traveling, I enjoy it very much. A good book, a great movie. There, there's, there's, there's beauty everywhere. We just need to appreciate the moments. And this is something that I have learned. Appreciate the moment and always be grateful. Always be grateful. And that, since I understand to be grateful, I've been happier. I've been a happier person. Diego, it was a really pleasure. The pleasure no. was mine. I felt like I went through therapy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's wow. amazing. It's yes. now a good thing. No, I'm no, not so it's sure. so wonderful. Yes, thank you <laughs> so much. Your dog was waking up now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for thank the conversation. Thank you, Corina. What a wonderful and wonderful to meet you and have you here in Guatemala. You are definitely a very gracious lady and. <laughs> in a brilliant one. So hopefully we'll be you seeing you more and having these wonderful conversations. Diego, thanks mm. so much for your openness, mm. for your deep thoughts. Really. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Thanks. My dear audience, my worldwide audience, this was amazing, <laughs> full of deep thoughts. Stay tuned. Like, subscribe, and talk to you soon. Have a beautiful day and some <laughs> nicely wings thank you, thank to fly. <laughs> thank you, no, Diego. You call. Oh, get to your lawyer. <laughs> Back to the lawyers. Back to the lawyers. <laughs>